So as Anna said, I really appreciate all of you joining us tonight. It's a lot of people and it'll be great to hear from all of your firsthand experiences. It's one of the best ways for us to kind of make these decisions for ourselves is to hear from peers who have done that. So I think a good way to start is everybody who volunteered tonight to walk through their experience. If you could give like a quick overview and just walk through a few key items, one, any key things that you think would be helpful for others to know, also how long ago you had the surgery and then what type it was. So I know there's either wires or bone graft, so that would be helpful as well. Um, I suggest go. just because there's so many people, maybe those of you who have had the surgery and would like to share experience, just use the hand raise and then we can go through you one by one. Uh, you, there's a hand raise function. If you go to reactions at the bottom of your screen, and there's a raise hand function. You get a little virtual hand and, and uh, makes it easier for us to see. That works. Uh, Renee, you wanna kick us off? Sure, thanks for inviting me. I had um, both my shoulders done at the same time, which I do not recommend to anyone, um, but I do recommend the surgery. I had um, both wires and, and bone graft from my hip. I have titanium wires. Um, I would, it, it, it's been, oh gosh, 30 years ago that I had it done. I had it done by a Johns Hopkins pediatric orthopedic surgeon. His name was J. David Thompson. I don't believe he's there any longer. Um, I do recommend it, but I do um, encourage people to do a lot of research. Um, there is a lot of recovery involved. It took about a full year uh, to recover from it. Um, there's a lot of physical therapy involved with it. There is a lot of pain, um, but I find that it's it was very, very, very helpful. I had increased mobility with both my arms for decades that I would not have had otherwise. Um, there are a lot of complications that can happen. Um, just ask a lot of questions and be aware. Some of them are more common complications than others. Um, but I would I would recommend it. I would do it again if I were younger if I were younger. That's the other thing. Make sure that your, your ribs are strong enough to tolerate the, um, the fusion um, and that your core is, is able to tolerate the muscles um, that you're going to be using again. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. And then Donna, I saw your hand next. Sure. Uh, well, like Renee, I, mine was over 30 years ago. It was around 88 for my right arm and 90 for my 1990 for my left arm. Uh, it has been one of the two best things I've done with FSH. Uh, the My AFOs being the other, um, they dramatically improved my life overall, the ability to move my arms. I echo virtually everything that Renee said. Uh, I think it is a surgery best done by the young uh, when your legs and abdomen are still pretty strong, I think it. I think that helps uh, recovery and usefulness of the surgery. Uh, most of the horror stories I've heard and encountered um, seem to occur when people have the surgery when they're further advanced in the disease. I wholly agree with Renee about one arm at a time. Do not do two arms at the same time. Um, the pain is pretty bad, but it will uh, it does subside and it does go away, and you can you can get on with life uh, and and move along. I assume the surgery has advanced a lot since I did it. I was one of the very first in the country to have it. Uh, my aunt, I think, was the very first to have the scapular surgery. So I'm sure it's quite a bit different now overall, uh, but uh, recommend it for those young who are still relatively mildly affected. Thank you, Don. And then Mr. Murphy. Uh, my name, I'm on my wife's, so my name is actually Richard Murphy tonight, but um um, I live in Columbus, Ohio. My father was a was an oncologist at Ohio State. So in 1980, I was 18 years old. I don't know if I was the first. I was the first that I with a, with in my area at the time. Um, but I had five surgeries. Uh, most experimental that we did 
both shoulders the first time, both of them with one wire that pulled through. And between there and the final one, which I did over a course, we did, we ended up doing five. I think what finally worked was five wires in the, the side, the packing of the of the bone fragments from your hip. I'm not sure if that really helped me, but definitely the five wires were the were enough for me. I'm six feet six inches tall, relatively thin most of my life. Um, but for for that time frame, it was a long haul, but nothing that I have anything bad memories about. I totally agree with what the others have said. And I, especially the last person, I think Don, I definitely kind of feel, unfortunately, it is a young person's game. Uh, my sister also is farther advanced in the disease with me. She, I asked her last night to give her information. And, and she felt, even though I did it before, even though she watched me go through it, she was younger than me, only about 12 to 15. Then she moved, then I moved away. So I said, well, why don't, did you ever consider it? She said in her experience with doctors in Memphis and at UCLA, no one ever asked her again if it was even an option. She never even thought about it for her after the, after the back. For, for me, once I got through the last surgery, it's been life-changing in a very, very good way. Thank you for that. And then Luke, I saw you next. Sure. Hey guys, I'm over in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I got the surgery um, 11 years ago. I was about 20, 21 years old at the time going through college. Um, and it, it, I got both the wires and bone graft. It, it was a combination. I don't know if it's separately at this point, um, but I, I got the surgery through John Warner at Mass General over in Massachusetts at the time. Um, there's a ton of rehab. The pain is very significant. At first, absolutely. I, I definitely don't regret doing it at all. Um, so, some negatives that I didn't really think about, but uh, t-shirts nowadays, like they don't fit very well at this point. Like there's always like a little tuft, like it's so freaking annoying. Uh, I see people <laughs> laughing about that. Um, I also had a ton of weddings, friends weddings this uh, past summer that I was in all of them, uh, getting fitted or tailored suits is an absolute nightmare. Uh, see some more noddings. Um, and something that I, I wish I'd paid more attention to in the physical therapy. I do have way more mobility now, which is great. Um, the pain, the pain and being uncomfortable, those feelings are significantly less within the shoulder. Um, and I just have it in my right shoulder. And uh, I definitely would recommend building up and working out the serratus anterior of both sides as much as you can. Uh, to try and not need to do this surgery. Um, but if, if need be, then I, I do highly recommend it. Um, and uh, the other negative is just um, there's a giant scar on your back uh, whenever you take your, your shirt off. But I do do recommend it very much. Did, Luke, did you say you did one of them? Just one, yep. Mm -hmm. you, what What's happening with the other one? Um, I'm, I'm fairly blessed in that the dystrophy hasn't like really accelerated too much. Um, it is on my left side, it is starting to get noticeably worse. Um, so I am like going full throttle on serratus anterior uh, exercises on my left to try and not need to do it, um, if I can avoid it, but I do think eventually I'll need to and i'm 31 right now so for you guys to keep saying that this is like a young person's surgery totally see why and now i'm kind of thinking about if i should just get it uh sooner rather than later so good thanks luke and dennis would you like to go next yes i had my right shoulder done in 1988 and then my left shoulder done uh in 1993 and they were both with the bone grass from the hip. My right side was just the wires uh, through the ribs and the shoulder blade. The left side, six weeks after surgery, they, all the wires on my left side pulled through. And we had to go back in and redo the surgery. They had to put a wire strap over top of the 
ribs, I mean, over top of the scapula because it was the weak part that pulled through. So I'm, I have wires and a uh, strap on the left side. I would definitely recommend it to anybody because it gave me 20 years of the simple things that we've all found out about afterwards, changing a light bulb, brushing my own hair, things like that that I couldn't do before that. And I would definitely like to say, do it at an earlier age if you can. So and that was it. It was, it was I, I look back on it and I hear my wife talk about uh, giving birth. That's what it is. It's after the surgery's over and you're out of the body cast and out of the slings and all that. I don't even remember it pain of it then so that was pretty much it thank you and then evan do you want to go next yeah <clears throat> thank you i'm evan byers out of minneapolis and um i got both shoulders done um, not at the same time but about six months apart both in 2021 and um, as i was doing the research uh, leading up to the the surgery i was looking for the right doctor and um visited dr uh, Anthony Romeo out of Chicago, uh, had a really good visit with him. And, and so he kind of gave me the, the confidence to move forward. Um, I had an orthopedic surgeon, uh, for a father-in-law and he'd actually heard of this surgeon before, um, just through kind of his workings and, and he thought really highly of him as well. So for those that are thinking of the surgery, I would, I would highly recommend going to see Dr. Romeo. He was, he was really great. Um, I thought that the, the, the six month separation was, was really good just because it allowed me to heal on one shoulder and then go directly into another. And you get the benefits of obviously being in the same insurance year. So I was able to kind of plan that out appropriately. Um, but I think the, the surgery I would, I would certainly recommend. I, I feel like I've gained a lot of benefit clearly uh, strength above my shoulders has been a big benefit. I had a lot of pain in my, in my shoulders and neck as I, I'm sure everybody can experience here. And so that, that, that did relieve a lot of it. I still do have some, some pain in, in the shoulders and neck, but it's, it's very uh, minor compared to what it was before. Um, so I've seen some immediate impact from a, a reduction of pain um, right off the bat, which is great. Um, and then there's, there's, there's simple things that are, that are frustrating, you know, getting a sweatshirt off or a, a tighter sweater off is this kind of a, a funny process for me to kind of try to squirm out of it just because the shoulders are locked into place and you can't really scrunch your shoulders together like 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 they're like I was used to doing um another kind of minor thing that is, is a little bit of annoying like sleeping is a little bit different just because you can't really scrunch your shoulders together your, your shoulders are locked into place so you're kind of sleeping on your side and so there's a little bit of a annoyance there but overall I'd, I'd highly recommend it and um, yeah, I think, I think one of my thought processes going into it was that it would, it would give me, um, an extended period of strength, uh, which it's great to hear from some of those on this call that have done it 20 or 30 years ago and, and still recommend it. So that gives me a, a really good level of comfort. So, and I appreciate all, all those that went before me, you know, obviously Don, you said you're one of the first and I appreciate you doing that just because of it's, you know, laid the groundwork for those that are looking into it in the future. So thank you. Appreciate that perspective, Evan. And it looks like Preston, you messaged in the chat that you'd be interested in sharing. Uh, yeah, whenever it's, uh, whenever it's my turn. Okay. Uh, floor is yours if you'd like it. Cool. Um, I had my, uh, had my shoulders done in two different surgeries uh, in 1991 and 92. Um, I was uh, almost 16 and 16. Uh, I did the surgeries three months apart. Um, at the time, uh, there were not many doctors doing the surgery. Uh, we talked to doctor in Baltimore, doctor in Chicago, um, and then ended up finding Dr. Raymond Morrissey in Atlanta, Georgia. And he had not done the surgery before, but I uh, was willing to uh, basically take a shot at it. Um, so I don't know, I, I came into the meeting late, so I don't know how everyone else's was done, but I can only talk to mine. Um, they did one shoulder at a time. Uh, they drilled six holes in each shoulder blade. 
uh, wired into the rib cage and then shaved bone off my hip to fuse it to the rib cage. Um, in three months in between each surgery, uh, I was six three, almost six four. When I had it done, I was going through a growth spurt. Um, the recovery was rough. Um, I didn't do a body cast. I just had slings. Um, lost a good amount of weight, uh, and my only regret in doing it was that I didn't wait longer in between surgeries to gain weight back for the second round. Um, I did get a um, increased functionality in raising my arms. Uh, I'm sure other people I think Evan was talking about, um, you know, you do have restrictions on, you lose a range of motion, uh, but you gain overall leverage to pick up your arms and do things, but you can no longer raise your arms straight up above your head. Um, what might be unique with me, uh, I'm infantile onset. So now at the age of 48, uh, I'm, I've been in a wheelchair since I was 19 years old. Uh, now at 48, uh, I require, you know, almost full-time care. Uh, my arms are completely deteriorated. Uh, so I have very little muscle uh, left in my deltoids, triceps, biceps, uh, forearms. So what that does then later in life is since the shoulders are fixed in place, the scapula and the upper shoulder, um, as the muscles are eroded in my arms, the arms slowly move further and further out of socket. Uh, I guess basically the ligaments seem to stretch. So I have a lot of instability in my upper arms. Um, if I press down on something, you can actually watch the ball joint of the arm move an inch or so up to where it meets the socket. Um, what I think this is, it's kind of a dual sided coin. Um, I have times where if I'm, someone's putting a shirt on me or I'm putting one on me, um, something in my left shoulder can move or pop and it catches what I'm guessing is a nerve. And it feels like a dislocated shoulder um, and it will sometimes resolve itself in a couple of minutes, sometimes it's a couple of days. Um, and the pain is exceptional. Um, but it happens once a year, twice a year, um, roughly. Um, I think the advantages I got out of it later in life was that when transferring, um, and I only know this because my mother has the same disease, but she didn't have the fusions um, when she goes to try to transfer herself by putting her weight on her arms, scoot over to something, her scapula wing out, and it causes a lot of discomfort. Um, as weak as my arms were, if I locked my elbow, um, I could support my weight on my arm to transfer over. Um, I don't know if I'd be able to do that with my scapula free with how much weakness I have in my upper body. So I think in one way, it gave me a lot of extended use of things. Um, but now that my arms are pretty much shot, uh, you know, our um, effects or uh, I just lost the word. There are consequences to having my shoulders fixed in place. Um, being that I have now increased instability in my upper arm. So that's kind of my experience. Um, if any, anyone has any questions, 
uh, I can answer those. Yeah, I'll take a minute there as well. If anybody has any follow-up questions for Preston or anybody that's spoken so far, um, please go ahead and ask them. It's amazing how it's amazing how random this disease is. I would add in um Zach, to, to my surgery, it was, like I said, it was in 2019, and I know a lot of folks had um, wires um, to help with the, the fusion. Um, mine was actually a medical tape in addition to the graph. And, and so um, I just thought I'd share that as well, because I don't know if that's universal with the surgery amongst all recent um, fusions, but... I will just add that we didn't use the the wires. We used um, medical tape, and you know, obviously, the the surgeon felt comfortable with that. But I just thought I'd add that little detail. Uh, that's interesting. I'm kind of curious because um, I mine was different. So when you lay down on a hard surface, uh, do you have discomfort? I don't. No. Okay, that was a uh, with the wires and the fact that's kind of awesome to hear they're doing that because with the wires. You know, if I went to lay down uh, on a hard surface uh, or like a floor, um, it was painful because you have basically they cut away the muscle behind the scapula. And so you just have skin and then the little knots where the wires are. Yeah. And, um, you know, that also has implications with MRIs. So it's really neat to see that they're doing it without, without wires now. Mm. I never, I never experienced any pain with my wires laying on a, on a hard surface, just in my experience. Nor I, and I think one of the things that came to mind while others were discussing, uh, is, you know, I've been in a number of clinical trials since then, and many of the clinical trials require MRIs. And at least in my case, the surgery evidently had been long enough ago that the wires have all dissolved or otherwise I've not had any trouble with any MRI in the in the years since, and I've had quite a few. Um, but that is something to consider if you want to be in a clinical trial and that clinical trial does require an MRI. Uh, the wires from the surgery could potentially impede your ability to be in the trial um, as, a, as a result. But for me, it's never been an issue. I also have uh, wires, it's titanium. And um, unfortunately, one of my, my fusions broke. So three years afterwards, I had to have it replaced. And unfortunately, I had a couple of complications, which they did resolve. I knew that they were potential. So I did have to have an MRI very shortly after I had the procedure done with the wires and it was never a problem. Thanks for that. And then Dennis, it looked like you had one in relation to what was being discussed and then we'll jump to Robert after that. You're on mute, I believe. Yeah, I had major problems laying on my back. I cannot lay flat on my back, even on a mattress I can't. Uh, but I have found what's helped me out talking about laying on our sides is the only bed that I can sleep on comfortably is a one called a purple mattress. It was designed for hospitals uh, specifically so it don't people don't get bed sores. And it allows me to sleep on my side all night long without having to rotate from side to side. And that's what's helped me out a whole lot. And then Robert, uh, would you like to go through your experience, please? Um, this is Bob. I've had my hand up for a while. I have not had the surgery, uh, but uh, based on what everybody has said, I'm 83 years old and been in a uh, wheelchair for three years. So I'm assuming that I would not 
be recommended for the surgery because of the wheel being in the wheelchair and limited mobility. But I was wondering if anybody has had uh, surgeons or physical therapy recommend any kind of shoulder harnesses or athletic taping. Can I jump in to answer that? <laughs> um, there have been people who've discussed using kinesio tape to kind of basically put it over the shoulder blade to try to hold it in place. Um, I think it's of limited use and it can be rough on your skin to do long term. So, um, and obviously it also depends on the severity of the scapular winging, but um, people have tried it and maybe in limited contexts, it might be something that could be helpful. Um, there are also kind of orthopedic body suits. I've heard about them mostly for children um, because the, some of them like with Duchenne and other neuromuscular conditions can also develop sort of scapular issues. And um, some people are enthusiastic about them, but um, I don't know about any long-term results from them. And with a suit like that, which fits very tightly, you know, you would need some assistance putting it on and so on. Um, I don't know if anyone else has experience or comments regarding. My son used a um, posture band that he bought on Amazon. But since then, both my kids have had the thoracic fusion and I had mine 30 some odd years ago. Um, but he did use it and found it very, it made it much more comfortable when wearing. It's just that posture, it's, it's really, you could look it up for posture. Well, thanks, Ellen. Yeah. By the way, would you compare and contrast your experience with the surgery and your children's experience with 30 years of perhaps <laughs> accumulated better? <laughs> sure, I, I had my surgery I mean, oh my God, I'm so old. I, I have to think about it now. So 35 years ago, um, I was about the eighth patient um, done down in Baltimore and it was done with wires. Um, I did break mine and had to have one redone. Um, but uh, I found it life-changing and allowed me to continue to live, uh, you know, up until more recently where I found more weakness but for the most part, I, I have the ability to raise my arms over my head with PT and um, exercise. Uh, my daughter had hers and she was probably the youngest patient with Dr. Anthony Romeo and she was 11. And then my son just finished his second one and he's 22 and he just did his in June again with Dr. Romeo and he does not use wires. He uses some synthetic like piece that he created and has seemed to have perfected the surgery and can actually do it under three and a half hours versus when I went through the surgery, it was eight and a half to 10 hours of surgery. So to me, it's a much quicker recovery um, for both my kids um, and they have fared really well from it. Um, for me, you know, I can't say anything but great things. Um, I do experience uh, some weird feelings if I'm against a metal chair, sitting in a metal chair. But I wouldn't say on the floor or anything like that, other than the fact that I'm probably bony. Um, I don't have a lot of muscle protecting, but um, that would be it. I, I can't, you know, anything else, June, I can share. I'm happy to share. Oh, thanks so much, Alan. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, uh, there are other people with their hands up. So uh, how about Jean? I just, I came in because I am 80. So like 
your name I can't read. I'm sorry. We're on the other end of this arc. <laughs> and fortunately, mine has been very slow developing. But in the last visit with the PT, he suggested the tape. And that was when I raised my hand because it has been suggested. I <clears throat> am sort of a minimalist when it comes to treatment. I do as little as possible, as few pills as possible, as few, just leave me alone. <laughs> um, so I haven't pursued that. I might, I, I don't know. Um, I, oh, I do appreciate the purple mattress suggestion and the support. Oh, you have to say that, what that was again, the body support thing. It's like a posture support. Posture, that was the word, yes. And okay. you look it up on Amazon and it's something that you put on over your shoulder, almost like a backpack, but it pulls your shoulders back into a proper posture position. Okay, I, so both those things I will explore. And thank you everybody for sharing your information. I too wondered whether it was something I should now look at. And um, it's clear that not for me, not now, not at this age. <laughs> but thank you all. Thanks, Jean. Dennis, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I, uh, the VA had uh, given me a kind of a suit that went over both of my arms, my shoulders. But the problem, I live in Arizona, and the problem with the suit was the inside, it's like a uh, skin diving suit. The inside is neoprene, so Arizona and neoprene didn't go too well for me. <laughs> so I wore it for maybe three months during the winter. Then come summertime, I couldn't wear it anymore. But it did pull my shoulders up and help hold my arms up too, because I was losing the muscles in my deltoids to be able to hold the arms up, and so that helped me pull them up quite a bit. But then summer came around, and I couldn't handle it anymore. Thanks for sharing that. So maybe folks in Alaska would appreciate it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Preston. Uh, just curious if there are any other uh, infantile onset uh, people that are in this chat that are considering the surgery or any other infantile onset that have had a, um, the more advanced deterioration have had the surgery my daughter's not in the chat but she is definitely an earlier onset um and did have the surgery back um i have to think now but i think it was 2019 um the same year as that other gentleman is she I, still able to try oh sorry go ahead yep i think they tag teamed it with dr romeo if i'm mistaken I don't know. I think Dr. Uh, Romeo was the first doctor I saw. Um, yeah. Um, that was in 1990, I think, 91. Um, one of the things I was going to mention uh, is that, uh, that I get worried about now. Um, I can't transfer myself anymore. Uh, and so for a long time, if someone was picking me up or helping me up or transferring me on an airplane, I was very guarded about being transferred by anyone who didn't know me. Um, because when you have that limited range in your arms, combined with uh, um, extreme arm weakness, uh, if someone grabs your arm, grabs you by your body, and does not support you properly, they can basically just break your arm or shoulder you know, with your body weight. Um, and it's something that I, you know, deal with now and um, being very careful with my arms um, uh, when being transferred. Uh, but, you know, with, with there, there being such a w uh, wide range of um, deterioration among patients, uh, I think I'm in the, in the, you know, top one to 5% of disease progression. Um, and I don't, I haven't met a lot of people with FSH, um, with my level of deterioration. 
So uh, that's why I was kind of curious about other people that have advanced deterioration or infantile onset. So, um, I don't technically on paper have infantile FSHC, but I did show symptoms at like a very, very early age. Like during my first year of life, like I was never able to like really move my face much. But luckily for me, I haven't really seemed to have had like the extremely severe progression that people with infantile usually have. But I did show symptoms very early in life. And then I was around not eight or nine when my shoulders became affected. And then by the time I was like 12 or 13, my hips and legs became affected. But um, I've actually read some studies about a, a small subset of people with infantile, the infantile form, that don't seem to have as fast of a progression as normal infantile people. So, yeah, I, th I think it's kind of weird because obviously I showed symptoms like literally like right after birth almost in my face, but I'm still walking and stuff. And generally my progression doesn't seem to be too rapid right now. How old are you? Twenty three. Twenty three. You um, I I don't have my camera uh set up, so I can't say. But uh, you remind me of me when I was when I was younger. So um, uh, but it's uh, you're still walking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. Uh, have you had this surgery or no? I haven't. Um. There's a, there's a lot to really consider because, like, my shoulders and upper arms are, like, extremely weak, but my, like, my trapezius muscles and my forearm muscles are very strong, so it seems to kind of balance it out in a weird way, and I can still, like, lift my left arm above my head. And one of the reasons I, I have held off on it is because because I already have lost so much muscle in my upper body, like it worries me during the recovery period that I might lose even more. And also, like when I get up off of a bed or off of a couch or out of a car, like I have to use both of my arms. And that's something that would worry me about getting the surgery, is not being able to get up on my own for so long or being like active like I try to be. Uh, I'm similar in the fact that my upper arms um, deteriorated first, and I was able to kind of uh, adapt by using the strength in my forearms to mm -hmm. still become functional. Uh, so I, I know what that's what that's like. I just I just want to say mm -hmm. the recovery today from the surgery is not as long as the recovery may have been back in the day. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you have certain muscles that are strong by doing, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm a promoter because I've done surgeries for everything, but I'm just saying is that it puts your shoulders into the right position so that the muscles that are strong mm -hmm. can continue to stay strong. And the recovery uh -huh. is six weeks. It's really not as where it used to be three months. It's six weeks. It's not as, you know. Oh, yeah, that, that's just not near as bad. Six weeks really isn't that long. It's not. And then it's a slow process of using your arm again. But I, my son mm -hmm. did a lot of convincing with Dr. Romeo, and he was out of this stupid brace in four weeks. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's possible on how well you heal, you know, and how mm -hmm. smart you are about the whole thing. It's not as dramatic of a recovery as it used to once be just to say yeah and then Ray, you message in the chat that you had on the comment you were to make yes thank you zach um i just happened to drop on here and i wanted to talk about an alternative to uh scap lift surgery that i've rolled on to i was diagnosed um i'm what you call late onset i was diagnosed at about 50 in in 2020 so to a certain extent i'm almost like new onset because all of this was new to me and I went through exactly what you went through. I didn't get a lot of help or hope with um, 
the scapular surgery, they, no, they, you know, they, my doctor wasn't very supportive. I was seeing the top docs. It got to the point where I couldn't, I was in chronic pain. I couldn't lift either of my arms. I was on a cane and I was just really in a bad place. So I was working out with a personal trainer who said to me, why don't you go to my chiropractor? And can I tell you, I'm going to show you this. Wow. Okay. I'm able, she has gotten me where I am even on the shoulders. I can raise both arms. You know how you walk your hands up the wall? Um, I can reach up the very top of my car and pull it down. I've got the strength now on both arms to use this arm to lever this arm to go up. And I'm getting almost weepy now, like weepy, because I, I had been told there was no hope. And I there is hope. And with even without the surgery, and the doctor that did it was a, a chiropractor called Dr. Joe Esposito. And I went on his radio station. He knows Dr. All Oz. He's very well known. I actually went on his radio show yesterday to talk about my transformation. And he remembers me coming into his office on a cane. I've had strangers come up to me in the Y that saw my journey and say, oh, my God, look at you. Look at your posture. You can't even tell anymore. You can't even tell anymore. And that was the bait of my existence. I was able to drive eight hours there and back to see my mom to Florida. And I'm right-handed, and that's the arm that's impacted. You know that that's not our life. There's just no way. So I would encourage you guys. Um, and what I said was I was going to start getting the message out. Everyone kept saying, you should tell people. You should tell people. We don't get it. I'm told this is an orphan syndrome. You may or may not know that the, the founder of Lulamon also has it. And he also talked about throwing, you know, trying to fund the research because this, the Center for Disease Control doesn't give us a whole lot. But I, there is hope. And there, there, there are things we can do. I do Pilates. I train twice a week. There's water aerobics. It, those of you that are early on, you can do this. And it will give you, it, this has extended my, again, I was told the next 10, 10 to 15 years, my mobility would deteriorate. I don't believe that anymore. My trainers have all seen an improvement. They've said to me, literally, you can do things now that you couldn't do when I first started working with you. And I didn't think it was possible. I had pretty much given up. So I, I did want to share that with you guys. I'm in Atlanta. My name is Freyanda, F-R-A-Y-A-N-D-A. -A -A. I'm the only Freyanda in the world. So you can get me at Freyanda at Gmail, Freyanda at Yahoo. I'm I'm willing because I know how, how, I mean, again, not even to be, I couldn't do my hair. The way you guys described this was my life. I had to lay down to put a shirt over my head. It, it, you know, my thing is I get that they can't cure us, okay? Because it's so genetic and it's so specific, but can they at least give us some act, some support for activities of daily living? That's all we want. I get that, but we want to be able to do something as simple as do our own hair, brush our own teeth. This right arm is the one impacted. I can actually raise this pretty high now. These are things that I could not do. So I would encourage you. I'm in Atlanta. Uh, Dr. Joe Esposito was the was the radio show that I was on. I'm actually been encouraged to reach out to the fellow at Lulamon and, and just talk to him and see if there might be time to start getting our message out. Because it, all I see is a clinical trial or a study or throwing money at it. But what about the living, the day-to-day -day living that we have to do for so many years with this condition? So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm a living testimony. I can tell, oh, I also was able to trek across Paris and Italy with walking sticks. And I did this a few months ago would never have been able to do this before I started working with this man. And I'm talking hills in Italy. Amazing. And Paris. It, it is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. yeah I, I would I'm love to miracle. hear more. Look in the chat. I would love to have you email me. This is June from the SSHD Society. Okay. Um, we have other patients who have told us similar stories that, uh, you know, well-targeted, knowledgeable, you know, physical therapy and exercise uh, can be very, very um, effective. And uh, we need to, we absolutely need to share more of those stories and do more research there. Um, this is a very multifaceted, you know, challenging condition. And there are, you know, all the different approaches and strategies that we can bring to bear on it. I think, um, you know, it's not a one size fits all <laughs> condition by any means. So. So thank you for sharing that. That of very story. Um, the chiropractic care was the real turn, but thank you everyone for listening. Okay, yeah. I'll share my help in the chat. That's helpful. Uh, and Evan, I see you have your hand up. I also want to ask you one question to get your perspective on it. So 
as a lot of people mentioned, it helps to be uh, younger to have more muscles that can support it once it's been fixed. But also some younger people, they may not be inclined to get the surgery because they think in a few years, there might be a treatment, in which case they wouldn't have to go through that. They can just kind of get better on its own. Um, what would be your thoughts? Like what motivated you to go and proceed with the surgery a few years ago? Good question. I'm sorry, Zach, was that a question for me? Mm -hmm. If you'd be willing. Yeah, you know, I I um <clears throat> I was diagnosed in 2019. I think I had the date wrong earlier. I had the surgery in 2021. And <clears throat> as, soon, as soon as I got it diagnosed, I just I dove right into the Facebook groups and went really deep into, you know, the internet and and I just found this as, as you know, a therapy or a procedure to help with maintaining strength in the long term, right? And so my personality is just kind of jump in and, and do the things now that will help me in the future. And, and so, um, you know, obviously it had pain at the time and had concerns with the, the, um, uh, the muscle muscle loss. And so I just decided that it would be you know, almost a good bet to move forward with it, you know, and, and at this point in time, it's, it's still fresh and new. It's only three years ago that I did it. So I don't know of the long-term effects, but, um, you know, that was some of my reasoning at the time. I will say, um, I did have a hand up and I will say that I'll share a little bit of the story of, of, of my second surgery. And again, this was in 2021 and, and I had surgery recovered in the hospital. My wife drove me uh, from Chicago to to Minneapolis. And when I got home in Minneapolis, I, I it turned out I had COVID and um, it, it got pretty ugly pretty quickly and, and got pneumonia in, in both in both lungs. And so, um, you know, one of the side effects of the surgery is it's really difficult to, to get a really big, deep breath, right? Just because of the pain that's associated with your rib cage. And so I would just, you know, not that I'm trying to put fear in anybody's head of trying to do the surgery, but if you are going to go through with it, just be very uh, cautious up front for the weeks going into the surgery. Make sure you're very healthy um, so that you can kind of give your best best chance of not getting any kind of sickness and then that eventually leading into pneumonia. And so I just that's a little bit of a story that I had with my second experience, but it was um, it was it got pretty ugly pretty quick. And, and so it's just obviously something that's, uh, um, you know, a risk that you, that you take going into a surgery like that. But again, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, you know, I thought the surgery uh, went overall really well. I think Alan, you had mentioned that it takes about six weeks to get in, you know, to, to recover and then get into PT. And that's about right for me. That's, that's what I experienced as well with about four months of, of PT. And, and since then I've kind of carried those exercises that I received in PT and I do that every day, you know, just to kind of maintain the strength in my rotator cuff and make sure that I'm maintaining those muscles that I have left in my, in my shoulders. Cause I think they're more important now, uh, given that I don't have any, you know, I don't really have any, any back muscles to help out with that, um, with the shoulder. And so anyways, that's a little bit of the, my, my, my second experience with, uh, with the surgery. Helpful perspective. And Dennis, give your hand up. Yeah. You guys mentioning about the short recoveries when I had mine done in 88, my right shoulder, I was in a body cast with my arm out to the side for three months in a hard body cast. Now you guys are lucky with those, the Don Joys and the, the pillow slings. I would have loved to have had that back then. <laughs> then my left shoulder was also a body cast, another uh, three months plus an extra month after the broken uh, wires. So uh, yeah. And earlier somebody mentioned about t-shirts and that there. Yeah, that's why I only wear sleeveless i cannot wear a regular t-shirt because i cannot get them over my shoulders or get them back off without somebody helping so sleeveless t-shirts or tank tops is about all i can really wear button-up shirts somebody has to help me put them on and i can button them but i can't get them around my shoulders without somebody helping and that's it and then i did want to take a second is there anybody that has had the surgery that would suggest not getting it or wish they had it? I have told uh, plenty of people, my matter of fact, my second to the oldest brother, which is five years older than me, also has uh, had FSHD. Unfortunately, he died four years ago from cancer. But after I had my shoulders done, he had his done. 
we've had three other friends that we've met through the VA and other places that have FSHD that have also had the surgery from my recommendations. I recommend it. It improved my life big time. Yeah, I think even with the complications later in life, um, now that I've gotten so weak, uh, I think still, if I had to go through it, I still would have done it again because of the advantages it gave me while I had strength. Um, and I think that the complications I'm having now, you know, are, are a, a good enough trade-off for what I gained for so many years until I got to this point. Um, and I think that a lot of things also change now that we are looking at getting closer to having therapies uh, that will be beneficial. So for someone like Evan, who was a recent diagnosis and um, appears to be you know, uh, uh, relatively strong as he is now, um, you know, they would benefit from a therapy. Uh, I don't see any. I don't see any any downsides that are. Um, they would make me not want to do it again. Thanks for that. I do want to save a couple of minutes. Is there anybody on here that joined who's um, not at it, but they're considering it? And any questions that you have for um, the people who have? Yeah, at what point does it become too late in the game to, to get it and get any benefit out of it? Well, as I think I mentioned earlier, uh, the more severely affected you are in the rest of your body, the less benefit you will receive from the scapular fixation, at least as I've seen it experienced by others. Um, I would actually argue, or I think I would say that in response to Zach's earlier question about, you know, would anyone not recommend it? Um, all of the people that I've seen that have had the bad experience that would not recommend it today, and there are quite a few, they were, they had it, um, they had it too late in their life when they were already like nearly, or they were wheelchair bound or nearly wheelchair bound um, and, uh, and they were, they were older. So I think I would be really hesitant if you sort of fall into one, one or both of those categories and have a very serious conversation with your doctor or your surgeon. Uh, I don't think there's any clearly defined black and white rule any of us can give you, and it's going to be very individually based. Uh, but well, those are the two big criterias I've seen. If I can jump in, um, maybe the most fundamental, well, in, in addition to what Don said, is you need to have strong deltoids. So when you fix the scapula, it reach, allows your arm to move upward without interference from the winging scapula. But to do that, you need to have the muscles that are capable of performing that motion. So um, they can assess that by, in the doctor's office, though, somebody will physically hold your scapula in place and have you raise your arm just to see how much strength and range of motion you have. So that's a fundamental. If you have weak deltoids, you, the this mechanical repair work done by the operation would not be enough to restore um, that motion. Uh, and then combine that with you know, it's a very arduous recovery and, you know, physical therapy. So you need to have the physical condition and strength to, to go through it. Um, I'm not sure, I, I don't know, hypothetically, if you were in a wheelchair, but you had strong deltoids, um, I suppose there could be benefit, except that being in a wheelchair might really um, make the recovery physical therapy and everything very difficult. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's, um, uh, I, yeah. you know, yes. I'd like to add, yeah. um, the deltoids are really, really very important, but you also use your core. 
Yeah. And Doc had mentioned earlier legs as well. Yeah. So it's not just a surgery for the arms, although that's what benefits, but to recover, you have to be able to use your core very well, Yeah. Uh, which is your, your torso um, and your hips and your legs, because physical therapy is going to require all of that um, to, to really help you get the best recovery right. from it from the surgery itself. Yes. So you really okay. do need to have a good core. That's a good point. Good core so. muscles. Um, also respiratory wise, when you, uh, when you inhibit your, your ribs, as somebody mentioned that mentioned that they had pneumonia, if you don't have good core muscles to help with breathing and with coughing, you're really setting yourself up yeah. for um, potential respiratory issues Those are excellent. or respiratory failure. Excellent points. Yeah. Thank you. And then Ciara, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, I'm Kira. Uh, it doesn't look like it sounds. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm new to all of this. I was just diagnosed about six weeks ago, and I've been talking to uh, a surgeon at Mass General, um, who I think somebody in the chat just asked about hip grafts. And he does this, I've asked him, he does the surgery without doing that anymore. He's developed his own way of doing the surgery. His name is Dr. El Hassan. I've really enjoyed my time with him so far. So um, I am on board with getting the surgery. And thank you for all of the stories that you have shared. This has been really helpful. Um, one thing that I'm kind of trying to piece together is if you can be excluded from studies or trial drug trials if you've done this surgery? Is this something that keeps you from being able to participate in anyone's experience or does anyone have insight about that? Yeah, June, can you? Um, just to tell you, it did not prohibit me from being a part of the study. It had nothing to do with it and um, the MRIs and all the testing, it just was a part of their knowledge and information to know but it really had no effect whatsoever on the trial. Okay, and you participated in the in these in some of the studies that have been yeah. done. Yes. Same program. Are you, been are in you three around to, to maybe talk about that offline at some point? I am always around and available. I'd be more than happy to. Okay, I'd love to know what your experience has been. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. I don't know if you can. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, your name is Sierra. Um, Kira. Yeah, Kira. Kira. yeah. I, I'm scheduled with Dr. El Hassan to get that surgery up at Mass General in April. When are you scheduled? In May. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I thought he was very, I mean, he seems very self confident. He seems like he was referred to me by an orthopedic surgeon that I had here in New Jersey who couldn't help me. He said he is the, you know, the king of, you know, shoulders. So yeah. I thought that he was really terrific. What was your opinion of him? I'm in New Jersey too, uh, and I, I, in I was referred to him by the team at Hospital for Special Surgery. Okay. Um, they, I went on a journey, about a 10-year journey with them, not knowing what to do with me or what I, what I was dealing with, and um, right. they finally referred me to him, and I drove out to Boston, and I saw him, and he took one look at me and knew exactly what was going on. And me too, me too, same. So I'm very grateful. Um, He's a very well dressed person. I don't know. Yeah, if right. It's. Yeah. I feel like it's not something worth commenting on unless it's really worth commenting on. But the man was wearing a three piece tartan suit exactly. when he came in the room, and exactly. yes. um, <laughs> he's very nice. Very. I felt very comfortable All right. with him. Um, I don't know. He just he he like you said, very confident, very like mm. um, assuring about the surgery, and he's he gave me a cell phone number. And was just like to ask me questions if you need because I've got a lot of questions. This is new, and so me too. Um, yeah, he's been. I'm a lot older than you are. I'm 67, but he said he's done this on people in their 70s with good success. And I listened to a lot of the discussion today, and most people had mentioned that young. This is a young person surgery, but and that's what I had thought. But he said if you're in good shape, um, and you're healthy. He said that even at my age, uh, he feels it would help me tremendously. So I just wanted to hear your opinion on him. I'm, I'm very happy that somebody here at least has gone to the same doctor that I'll be seeing. I can, I'll let you know how it goes because I'm going, I think April the 24th is when I, when I have the surgery set. My wife is going to be driving up there with me. They told me 
that I'll have to be in the hospital there for about two to three days, hopefully no more. And then he's going to use sutures, he said, on me. I said, no wires, no no screw. He said, no, I'm going to be using sutures. Uh, apparently, that's the latest, you know, a form of uh, a latest technique that they use these days. He seems to think they work out very well. But um, I'm just very happy that someone in this entire discussion is at least going to the same doctor that I'm that I'm going to be seeing and, and feels the same way. I think he's uh, very confident. He seems to know what he's doing. He, and he was very positive, you know, which made me feel very good because I'm still a little apprehensive about the whole thing. That's why I'm on this call today. But thank you for your input. Thank you. Um, so I, we're out of time for us to let you ask your question. I'll have a few closing comments. Um, but again, really appreciate everybody for joining us. Tonight. I just uh, as a quick I, thing, um, as okay. someone who uh, who did drug studies early on and then is no longer eligible for studies, um, as far as I know, most of the studies now um, just look at your ability to do things like walk across the room, walk up and down stairs. Um, as long as you are generally physically functional, that's the criteria they look for because they want to see whether there is improvement or or uh, deterioration. Um, when I was no longer able to walk, uh, I was no longer eligible for most of the studies. So um, as far as you wondering about the studies, like my, my scapular fixations never excluded me from a drug study. Thanks for that. And I did want to mention the society's got a pretty detailed webinar with one of the surgeons. Um, I think it's on the YouTube and the website. So definitely a good one to check out that goes through both the process and a lot on the recovery as well. So that'd be a good supplement to this discussion. And then next uh, next month on the 19th, we'll have kind of a similar discussion. I'll be a single guest speaker. It'll go into good depth with us on preventative care for secondary complications. So kind of relevant to this discussion a bit as well if that's something that you're interested in then hopefully you can join us. and also um, going forward we're happy to take any suggestions if there are other kind of health related topics or mental health um, whatever it is that you're interested in hearing about that's something that we'd like to get meetings set up for so you can just send that to um, our email address which will be on the invites going forward and we'll try to get those worked in the schedule With that, anybody have anything that they just really want to say before we close? I was just going to say one thing, and I don't know who's on the chat still, but I would really recommend before going to Dr. Hassan is to also reach out to Dr. Anthony Romeo in Chicago and compare and contrast their techniques and have that conversation because I'm aware of Dr. Hassan and I flew to Chicago instead. So I don't know who's listening or not. I would really recommend before they go forward. That's all. That, thank you. Thank you. Is yeah. Anthony Romeo, is that his name? Dr. Anthony Romeo. And he's a part of, uh, he's in Chicago. And um, June has his information, but I have his information. You could reach out to me yeah. through. I don't know however this, this whole thing, I don't know how to use this Zoom stuff, but <laughs> reach out to me. I will give you the information. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I flew to Chicago um, with my son. I think it was worth the trip and it was extremely successful. Why did you not use Dr. El Hassan? Um, because I heard of a case where it was not done well and had to go to Dr. Romeo to have it completely redone. Okay. All right. But I'm not saying that he's incapable. It's just that based on that information, mm -hmm. uh, it raised an eyebrow. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, I'll mention uh, Dr. Romeo introduced us to Dr. El Hassan with great enthusiasm. So yeah, it right. comes with the recommendation of Dr. I mean, I think they Romeo. Both yeah, they all circle together and they communicate tremendously yeah. with one another. So as I say, it could have been one scenario, um, but I know that Dr. Romeo is working mm -hmm. very hard on teaching a lot of other surgeons mm -hmm. 
his techniques and methods and they're all very tight group. Mm -hmm. They take a lot of pride in it. So I'm not saying that don't go to Boston. I'm saying just, I would gather some information. That's all. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I, definitely. What is your name? Ellen. Her Ellen. Right. And you said you have inform you have the information on Dr. Romeo, his yeah. uh, email address or whatever. Or? Okay. All yeah. right. I, is there a way to, I don't even know how, do I put my email? What do I do in this thing? Um, I don't know. I, um, how do I contact you, you could, get information? <laughs> you, you could put your email in the chat, the chat if oh, that's okay. possible. All right. Okay. okay. If you're interested at all, I know Dr. Romeo video recorded my entire surgery. And so wow. <laughs> he owes that to me <laughs> because he hasn't sent it to me because I want to see it for some sick reason. But um, he did record my entire one. And I, I said that he could use it however he wants. So uh, the one takeaway is that, it, you know, it is a serious surgery and yeah. it's something you're going to have done once, hopefully only once. Um, so you really want to make sure you shop around, not shop, but to talk to a couple of doctors, go see them, like the $500 plane ticket in for peace of mind is going to, you know, uh, pay off in the long run uh, so that you have peace of mind, what you're doing and who you're doing it with, who you're comfortable with. Um, so that's my last, my last piece of advice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just again, thanks everybody for joining tonight. Hope you all found this discussion helpful. Thank you, Zach. And thank you to all of our.